So today we're exploring the optimal graphic settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 running on a high-end PC. I'm on a 5800X3D with a 4080 Super with 32 gig of RAM. So not the highest of highest end, but high end enough. And today's testing will be done at 4K using TAA. Although at the end, we'll also show you how our optimizations work at 1080p and 1440p with and without frame generation. We'll also discuss DLSS and FSR upscaling during the video as well. And just quickly floating this idea, I do have more of a mid-range build here as well. I've got an AMD 5600X CPU with an NVIDIA 3070 build. So I think that kind of represents the mid-range. So I could also do the same style of video for that build. So let me know in the comments if that is the kind of video you would like to see next on the channel. Well, let's start out here in LAX with the terrain level of detail, which had a huge impact on our FPS in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Starting here with a level of detail of 25, it looks pretty awful, but we are seeing quite a nice high FPS. 50 improves things a little, 100 even more so. And here we have what I think is the sweet spot, 150. It defaults to 200 on the Ultra preset, so let's take a look at that. And honestly, I'm not sure it's worth the extra strain on your hardware. Yes, it looks a little bit better, but I'm not sure it looks better enough. You can push beyond 200, so going to 300, you can see we're getting more detail further out into the scene, and even more so at 400, but I think 150 is the sweet spot. If we cut back to 150, Yes, you can see there's less detail on screen, but there's still a good amount such that it looks good and crucially it gets us a few extra FPS in the bank relative to a level of detail of 200. Next up we have off-screen terrain pre-caching, which doesn't affect things from a visual point of view, but a higher value can decrease stutters as you have terrain that's due to be rendered in, held in a cache. It's more a question of how much RAM you can afford to give it. We're seeing here roughly 26.8 gigabytes of RAM used at low, 27.1 at medium, 27.6 at high, and 27.8 on ultra. Now, keep in mind this may vary depending on where you are in the sim, and if you do find yourself running out of RAM, this could be a good setting to check. For me personally, I'm going to run with it on high for now, as I worry that ultra might cause me issues given that I only, <laughs> only have 32 gigabytes of RAM. So here we're looking at displacement mapping, which gives things such as these rocks a height map to give them a 3D appearance. This is a simple on or off setting, so let's flip it to off, and yeah, you can see the visuals have taken quite a nosedive here. Yes, okay, we're getting 3, 4 FPS more maybe, but I think given how much worse it looks, I'm not willing to make that trade. For me, displacement mapping is staying on. Okay, looking at building details, we start here on low, make note of the FPS, and it doesn't really seem to move a huge amount as we go to medium, and you can see the buildings are starting to look a little bit better, and up to high, and then finally to ultra. I can't really tell a lot of difference between high and ultra, and in general it all kind of looks a bit janky anyway, so I'm going to go with high here. Onto plants, and here we have plants set to off, and if we turn them on to the lowest setting, this is what we are met with. Again, just look at the FPS numbers here. We're not seeing huge changes as we move up to medium, then to high, and then finally to ultra. But again, I, you know, I'm not, this isn't walking simulator for me. This is flight simulator. I'm gonna go with high I think just because it's nice to have you know a little bit of extra detail perhaps if I'm coming in on final approach and there happens to be some plants um, but ultra I think is probably going to be a waste of resources I just wanted to touch quickly on DLSS upscaling not frame generation upscaling they're two separate technologies and I wanted to retest it in 2024 as in 2020 I did not like it at all I found particularly on the glass cockpits uh, there was a very certain smeariness about them that I really disliked and as you can see here it is the same story again in 2024. This is running at 4K with DLSS set to quality. Obviously it will help your frames per second if you're GPU limited and depending on what kind of GPU you're on maybe you need the help there. Fair enough go for it but if you've got the power I would say to leave it off and go with TAA instead. Uh, just for completeness, I also checked out FSR 2, and it's the same story. you still got that smeariness, and in general, I think it looked even worse than DLSS. 
As for trees, you can see here on the Ultra preset, they are looking absolutely amazing, dropping down to low, and we're losing a lot of detail. Yes, we're getting some extra frames, but I'm not willing to accept low here. Medium is a step up, but it's not quite right in my opinion. High looks much more like it. Note how we've also got our shadows back, which is nice to see. I think we're most of the way back to being almost as good as ultra on high and so for that reason I'm going to go with high. The FPS difference may not be massive here in this instance but elsewhere in the world it may very well be. Looking at the rock setting here we are on the ultra preset and you can see they look pretty good um, and if we jump down to the low preset you can see that it's not looking hugely different but it's not as simple as that. If we start panning around with our drone camera you can see how poor the draw distance is when we're on the low setting. It gets slightly better at medium, but still not great. High, I think, is where we get an acceptable level of draw distance. That looks much, much better indeed. So high it is. And we're looking at the grass now here on Ultra, and it's looking very, very nice indeed. Dropping down to low, as you'd expect, there is a significant drop in quality. Medium gets us some way of the way back there, but it's still not quite there in my opinion. High though is looking pretty good. Not quite as good as Ultra, but keep in mind this isn't rolling around in the grass simulator. This is flight simulator and if we look at the grass from you know, the level of where we are at the plane here on the runway on high, it looks absolutely brilliant. I appreciate that FPS hasn't changed much during these tests, but that doesn't mean to say that we won't see a benefit of choosing high over ultra in other areas of the sim. As again, you know, like we said, it's a big word out there. If there's uh, not a clear benefit for choosing ultra, I'm taking high every time. Stable FPS really, really matters. So we're now looking at the object level of detail. Now this controls the level of details on objects such as airport terminal buildings, other planes and vehicles you might encounter, just to name a few. But it does a lot more than that. It also affects the render distance of these objects. Now there's an argument to be made that you're better off having a higher object level of detail such that when you're on final approach, things that the airport are loaded in when you're further out on that approach versus just when you're about to touch down meaning that any stutters that you're likely to encounter as a result of all this stuff being loaded in are going to happen during a less critical phase of flight however this has an impact on ram usage and you'll have noticed so far in this video we're really pushing our 32 gigs of ram to the limit so perhaps a lower object level of detail would be sensible let's find out Okay, having now set the object level of detail to 50, you can see our RAM is now comfortably beneath our limit of 32 gigabytes. Yes. Good, so with an object level of detail of 100, we are still within 32 gigabytes, albeit it's getting a little bit close for comfort. What happens if we go back up to, say, 150 and then finally to 200, which is what the Ultra preset defaults to? Okay, so we're now at 150 and it has settled down to just over 30 gigs, but it did momentarily peak over 32 gigabytes. So I can immediately tell you 150, I think, is going to be out of the question for me, at least until such a time that I upgrade to 64 gigs of RAM. Yeah, now we've got an object level of detail of 200. You can see we are right on the edge now of our RAM limit of 32 gigabytes, 31.8. And I'm betting if I were to start taking off down the runway, it would get a awful lot worse quite quickly let's see what happens and yeah even just kind of taxiing down the runway here we're, we're very very close to 32 gigs we are kind of what i would consider to be on the bleeding edge of what i've got with 32 gig of ram so i think on balance given that 150 took us pretty close um it's, it's probably gonna have to be 100 you can maybe do 125 if you want to but um the next thing to do, of course, is compare visually how things look. Um, we've spoken about the RAM implications, and it's quite clear that the object level of detail eats up your RAM. So the motivation from my point of view is to go for 100 just to save the RAM. Uh, but let's also look next at the visual implications as well. And very quickly, just to show you how things can change visually as we go through the settings here, we've got an object level of detail of 50 and 100 which is a decent step up here's 150 and here's 200 i think it's safe to say that 100 is where you kind of get the best bang for your buck yes there's more detail at 150 and 200 but not nearly as much as that between 50 and 100 100 it is for me at least until i upgrade to 64 gigs of ram anyway 
looking at volumetric clouds and now we're using the ultra setting and it looks pretty awesome though uh, dropping down to low and things don't look so clever yes we've gained a little bit on the fps but i'm not really willing to make that trade in this instance going up to medium they're a bit better but still not good enough in my opinion at high we're starting to see a return to form um, but i'm still not convinced they're as good as ultra i think this might be a rare case where we choose ultra it is flight simulator after all and clouds are a big part of it so i think it's probably worth spending a few frames here next up we're looking at texture resolution we're on ultra right now and this setting will impact your gpu vram usage so if you're struggling in this regard this is a really good lever to know to pull Let's switch down to low and you can see we haven't really seen an impact on our FPS but our VRAM usage has dropped. I would show you all the settings between low and ultra but it requires me to restart the sim every single time. Um, for me though, being on a 16 gig GPU, I'm gonna stick with ultra. As for you, it's gonna depend on your hardware and your VRAM limitations. Okay, onto anisotropic filtering. I hope I'm saying that right, which can improve the look of things at a distance and things that you look at at a steep angle. Hence, we're looking at the sign writing down the body of this truck. So we're on the highest preset here, 16x. If we turn it off, uh, we see how it looks. It, you know, you might not be able to see this thanks to YouTube compression, but I can tell you that the quality of the text on the side of the truck, to my eyes, looks a lot worse. But the FPS really hasn't changed at all. Having checked through all the settings in between off and 16x, 16x did look the best and it didn't really give me any performance hits so I would recommend 16x. Texture super sampling now and I feel like I was going crazy with this one as no matter what I did I couldn't tell a difference visually. Here we are at 8x8 that's the highest setting and here we are with it off. I like can you tell the difference because i really really can't like no real fps impact here either i'm beginning to wonder if it's bugged so um i don't know no comment on this one i guess i think i might just leave it off i guess you could run it at the lowest setting of two by two if it being totally off makes you feel uncomfortable but uh yeah you're gonna have to figure out figure this one out for yourself because i really can't okay now we're here at gibraltar looking at some waves and we're on the high setting and it's looking pretty awesome Moving down to low, uh, yes, we've gained a couple of FPS, but the visuals take a big hit. So low for me is out of the question. Medium looks all right. Obviously, it's not as good as high, but it's respectable. I'm going to say I'm going to go with high, um, and I'd recommend you do too if you can. If you're having issues, though, on high, medium is a good fallback option to have in your back pocket. As for Ray Trace shadows, I'm sure you can all remember the questionable looking shadows in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. So I was thrilled when I learned that we were gonna get Ray Trace shadows in 24. And looking at them here in the cockpit, they are absolutely wonderful. Note how this shadow is being caused by um, our side window pillar, which is some distance away. And as a result, the shadow has like a really nice soft edge to it. This is awesome stuff. Turning it off does get us a, you know, some FPS back, but the shadows do look terrible by comparison. This is an on or an off setting, so for me, I will be leaving it on. Okay, time for shadow maps, and looking at the shadow of our Airbus A321 here, and to really see the difference that the shadow map settings will make, we need to disable the ray trace shadows that we just enabled. So here you can see, without the ray trace shadows on the lowest settings, things aren't looking great. If we move the shadow map settings up to 1024, things start to improve a bit. 1536, even more so. You can almost see the little slit here caused by our wing. 2048 is better still, no real FPS impact, so I guess go with 2048. And just to show you how good ray trace shadows are, again, let's re-enable them and boff, look at that. Absolutely worlds apart, brilliant stuff. Now looking at terrain shadows, we've come to the Grand Canyon, starting out on the highest setting of 2048. Let's drop it all the way down to the lowest setting of 128. And we've gained a few FPS, um, and I'm not entirely sure it looks that much worse. Moving up through 256, then to 512, then to 1024, you can see the shadows are increasing. And this isn't a time of day thing. This was all done at once. So no real FPS impact here either, going from 128 to 1024, though going to 2048 does lose a small amount of frames. On the basis that I can't really tell much difference between 1024 and 2048, I think I'll take the extra frames and go with 1024.
looking at contact shadows, starting with them off, we're on 58-ish FPS, turning them onto low, and we're losing a couple of frames, but we're seeing a good upgrade in visual quality, and we can step through medium, up to high, and even to ultra, and we're still not seeing an FPS impact. Uh, so I guess with that in mind, we'll run with ultra at this time. Moving on to windshield effects, and I would have loved to have shown you this, but I'm fairly sure this is bugged, because every time I change it from medium to high, when I go back into the menu, it's back to medium again. So uh, really sorry, I can't show you this one. Over to ambient occlusion, and we have it here set to ultra. We're getting around 33 to 34 FPS. Uh, turning it off, you can really tell there's a big difference in visual quality, albeit not much of an impact to our FPS. So turning it on to low, you can see it come into life. Here's medium and high and back to ultra. Now, given that we're not seeing an FPS impact here, I'm going to run with ultra. So we're looking at cube map reflections here and pay particular attention to the cloud reflection in the top left of our window here. We're on the lowest setting of 128 at around about 50 FPS. Going to 192, it looks clearer to my eye without an FPS impact, which is good. 256 continues to look better. Maybe we've lost a frame, but it, it's barely, barely anything. 384 maybe looks better, but not enough in my opinion. Plus our FPS seems to be a bit less stable. Uh, I think I would say go with 256 for most people. 192 if you're on a lower end rig. And I guess if you're planning to get like a 5090 next year, like yeah, sure, go for 384. You, you've paid enough for that privilege after all. Looking at ray marched reflections here in Queenstown, New Zealand, uh, we currently have them set off. And I think you'll agree those water reflections aren't looking great. Switching it on to low, and we can immediately see a big update to the visuals. Uh, yes, we've lost two or three FPS, but it looks way better than off. Now, going to medium, you can see objects further up those mountains now being reflected in the water. Interestingly, without any real drop in FPS. Going to high, more of the same, and ultra looks just incredible in my opinion, though it does eat away at your FPS a bit. So, if you can go ultra but if not you're going to have a really good experience on high and if you are a bit up against it in terms of your rig specifications even just going to low is a massive upgrade from off for me though i'm going to be running on ultra looking at light shafts here in wellington new zealand and we currently have this setting turned to off uh, using the low settings though you can tell it's a massive step up from nothing at all and as we walk through the different settings i'm struggling to tell the difference but there's no noticeable fps drop going on here so it's possible that in other scenarios ultra would make more of a difference and given the limited impact to fps that we're seeing i'm going to take a chance here and i'm going to run with ultra as for depth of field, as far as I can tell, this only really impacts the drone camera. So if you don't use the drone camera, you can probably ignore this one. Uh, for me, being a YouTuber, I often do make good use of depth of field for my thumbnails. So I'll max it out on this one. But, uh, you know, you do you with this one here. Motion blur, nice and simple. Turn it off as it should be for all games. And for the glass cockpit, we're going to go with high. This used to be a setting that caused a lot of trouble in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, but now in 24, we're multi-threaded and we don't need to be afraid anymore. We can run it on high and not suffer with our FPS. All the other settings below the glass cockpit and down really are up to you and how you use the sim. There's no real FPS impact going on here with any of them as far as I could tell. Uh, in my case, I'm going to disable the airport traffic, uh, etc. as I fly on VATSIM, so I don't really want any static aircraft getting in the way. I was keen to check out ships, but looking between Dover and Calais, one of the world's busiest shipping routes, I couldn't see a single boat. So I don't know, maybe it's bugged. Same for animals. I looked all around different fields everywhere, maybe trying to find some cows. Like, I couldn't see a damn thing. So yeah, I, I don't know on that one. So here we are finally back in LA where it all started and after making all of our tweaks we're getting a solid 5 to 6 FPS extra compared to the 49 to 50 FPS we had when we used the Ultra preset at the start of this video. Which might not sound like a lot but given that we're starting at 50 that's a solid 10% extra without making the sim look noticeably worse and I'll take any gains I can get. Sure, while it all seems fine here in this moment right now you know it's a big world out there and there are many different places that will tax your system in different ways so having anything extra at all in fps reserves is always very wise in my opinion 
it's all about stability with our FPS in the sim. That is the main goal, stability. I do think, though, that a 64 gigabyte RAM upgrade is in my future, as the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that my RAM was being rather filled up throughout a lot of these tests. And to those of you that are angry that all these tests were done in 4K, let me just drop down to 1080p, and you can see there's only a small number of frames in it, barely anything. And going to 1440p, again, barely anything in it. It would seem we're CPU limited at this moment. Although you know, being CPU limited at nearly 60 FPS is not a terrible place to be CPU limited for the flight sim, especially coming from what we knew with flight sim 2020. Testing out NVIDIA frame generation on top of this in 4K, and unlike in 2020 where frame gen would essentially double up your frames, you can see that's not the case here, but it is a nice bump nevertheless. However, if we run frame gen in 1080p, you can see that we are getting that doubling behavior same in 1440p, um, so that's very similar to 2020 in that regard. So I don't know, maybe it's a 4K limitation going on here with my 4080 Super in Flight Sim 24. I don't know. If you've got a 4090, um, are you seeing this behavior in 4K too, or is it just me? I don't know. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you found today's video useful. If you have anything you would like to add, feel free to leave a comment, share the knowledge, share it with the community. Let's help everyone out. And I will leave you with this text on screen now so you can see what my recommended settings are. If you found this video useful, please, please, please leave us a like. It helps the video and the channel a ton. And also, of course, leave us a comment if you've got anything to add to the conversation. But I will leave this one here. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. And as always, happy flying.